in Centerville. And I'm standing in a what used to be an agricultural field at one point. It's now uh, a grassland, uh, and this has just been recently mowed. Uh, typically, management for an area like this is to you know let the grasses grow for over the course of the summer and then to mow them down. So I wanted to start here because I wanted to uh, talk about a place history and in terms of what it takes to build a, a forest starting from uh, an open field like this. So if you'll come with me on my journey, uh, we'll, we'll travel through time uh, and watch a forest grow from this uh, mowed area into an actual forest. So we're standing in an area that has not been mowed for one year. And as you can see, it's, it's very different than a mowed area. We've got a bunch of uh, vegetation growing in here. Lots of plants like this goldenrod, which flowers, uh, has these bright yellow flowers, basically August, September, and into October. Uh, and a couple other scattered uh, herbaceous plants throughout here. Many of these plants are perennials, that is, they live longer than a year. Uh, and so what they do is they live in the winter below ground as rootstocks, and they send up new shoots again in the spring. All right, so here we are. Uh, well, this particular area here has not been mowed for a period of five years. And what we can see uh, in comparison to earlier is that the herbaceous plants have gotten uh, quite a bit taller. Um, these are still the same general species as these are goldenrods in through here. But now we're starting to see a couple species of trees. We see some calorie pear saplings here uh, and here and then back behind me. So no nothing in this area was planted. This is just what nature brought into this particular site. So these calorie pears were probably dispersed in uh, by birds. Uh, possibly by wind, but by more likely by, by birds uh, bringing them here and then pooping the seeds out uh, and getting these trees started. So uh, our, this is not quite a forest yet, this is still sort of a, an open field, but we see some trees starting to begin to lay the foundations for what will become our forest in the future. Right. Here we are in our field, but now this is an area that has not been mowed for 10 years. And we see uh, maybe some more trees uh, now starting to fill in. Uh, they're a bit taller than we saw before. Uh, but this is, we're starting to get now, uh, this is sort of a le less of a field, uh, but not quite a forest. This is really sort of the beginning of what forest succession looks like. Again, we see a lot of calorie pears in here, so this is telling us at this particular place 10 years ago, there were, uh, there were birds perhaps carrying those seeds in and depositing them in this field. Um, so it's giving us a bit of a window back, uh, back in history. Uh, we see still the goldenrods, but the goldenrods are becoming a little bit uh, more sparse. Uh, and the trees are becoming a little bit more important. So let's, uh, let's continue down our, our trail and look uh, what happens in another five years. All right, so now we're uh, 15 years uh, after mowing, and we can see that uh, this is really starting to resemble a young forest. Uh, we see lots of trees behind me now that are about uh, 20 feet tall. Uh, we still see lots of calorie pear uh, growing in through here. Uh, and then our goldenrod is becoming increasingly sparse. So these remnants of the field are still holding on, but they're becoming less and less uh, prominent as we move further, uh, further back in time. Now we're back uh, 20 years ago is when this area was last mowed. The trees are now getting up to be 30, 35 feet tall. So we definitely have a young forest here. There's no obvious uh, goldenrod present anymore. Uh, we're starting to see different groups of plants. We're starting to see some ash uh, saplings present, still the ever-present uh, calorie pear. Uh, and then also behind me, we have a, uh, a tulip tree poplar, or a tulip poplar, uh, growing as well. So we're starting to get a little bit more diversity as the area has had more opportunities for, for colonists to come in and establish. All right, now we are looking at an area that hasn't been mowed for 25 years. And this is starting to resemble almost entirely forest. So we've sort of seen that whole succession process from moving from one year to five years to 10, 15, 20, and then finally after 25 years, this is what our forest starts to look like. Now, this particular site is going to allow this forest to uh, continue to grow over the next 75 years. And on this trail, 75 years from now, you'll be able to walk from a mowed area all the way out to an area that's 100 years old. And every, uh, every 10, 20 feet or so, you'll be transitioning one year into the past and then another and then another. 
So the story of this place really is, is one of change and succession. It's a deliberate uh, effort on the part of the, the park managers here to try to show this process of succession in a way that is tangible, visible, uh, and visceral. So as you sort of walk through this particular path, you get a sense of how change can be very subtle from year to year, but cumulative. And so by the time you reach uh, 25 years into the past, you're at a very, very different place than where you started.